sampling techniques. In statistics, population refers to the entire set of observations that are of interest to an analyst. The term is often used to contrast with a sample, which is a subset of the population. Sampling aims to collect a representative subset of the population. Sampling is used when observing all population data could. 1. Request excessive economic resources. 2. Request more time than the one made available. 3. Destroy the entire population, for example in the case of destructive tests. To draw valid conclusions from your results, you have to carefully decide how you will select a sample that is representative of the group as a whole. There are two types of sampling methods. A. Probability sampling involves random selection, allowing you to make strong statistical inferences about the whole group. B. Non-probability sampling involves non-random selection based on convenience or other criteria, allowing you to easily collect data. Each of these sampling methods has four subsections. Probability sampling methods. 1. Simple random sampling. 2. Systematic sampling. 3. Stratified sampling. 4. Cluster sampling. Non-probability sampling methods. 1. Convenience sampling. 2. Quota sampling. 3. Purposive sampling. 4. Snowball or Referral Sampling Let's see the characteristics of each sampling technique. Probability Sampling Methods Probability sampling means that every member of the population has a chance of being selected. It is mainly used in quantitative research. If you want to produce results that are representative of the whole population, probability sampling techniques are the most valid choice. 1. Simple Random Sampling When you're using a simple random sample, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Your sampling frame should include the whole population. To conduct this type of sampling, you can oftentimes use tools like random number generators or other techniques. For example, you want to select a simple random sample of 30 employees of Company X. You assign a number to every employee in the company database from 1 to 100 and use a random number generator to select 30 numbers. 2. Systematic Sampling Systematic sampling is a type of random sampling in which the list of individuals is divided into discrete groups that are assigned a number. As opposed to simple random sampling, individuals from each group are gathered at regular intervals. For example, all employees of the company are listed in alphabetical order. From the first 10 numbers, you randomly select a starting point, number 5. From number 5 onwards, every 10th person on the list is selected 5, 15, 25, 35, and so on, and you end up with a sample of 30 people. 3. Stratified Sampling Stratified sampling is a great way to make sure you have a representative sample of the population. This makes it possible to draw more solid conclusions by including everyone, no matter their background. For example, the company has 300 female employees and 200 male employees. You want to ensure that the sample reflects the gender balance of the company, so you sort the population into two strata based on gender. Then you use random sampling on each group, selecting 30 women and 20 men, which gives you a representative sample of 50 people. 4. Cluster Sampling Cluster sampling involves dividing a population into groups with similar characteristics. Instead of picking individuals from each group, you choose entire groups at random to get your sample. For example, the company has offices in 12 cities across the country, all with roughly the same number of employees in similar roles. You don't have the capacity to travel to every office to collect your data, so you use random sampling to select four offices. These are your clusters. Okay. Let us move to the other method. Non-probability sampling methods. In a non-probability sample, 
Individuals are selected based on non-random criteria, and not every individual has a chance of being included. Non-probability sampling techniques are often used in exploratory and qualitative research. In these types of research, the aim is not to test a hypothesis about a broad population, but to develop an initial understanding of a small or under-researched population. 1. Convenience Sampling A convenience sample simply includes the individuals who happen to be most accessible to the researcher. This is an easy and inexpensive way to gather initial data, but there is no way to tell if the sample is representative of the population, so it can't produce generalizable results. You are researching opinions about student support services in your university, so after each of your classes, you ask your fellow students to complete a survey on the topic. This is a convenient way to gather data, but as you only surveyed students taking the same classes as you at the same level, the sample is not representative of all the students at your university. 2. Quota Sampling Similar to a convenient sample, a voluntary response sample is mainly based on ease of access. Instead of the researcher choosing participants and directly contacting them, people volunteer themselves, for example, by responding to a public online survey. Voluntary response samples are always at least somewhat biased, as some people will inherently be more likely to volunteer than others. You send out the survey to all students at your university, and a lot of students decide to complete it. This can certainly give you some insight into the topic, but the people who responded are more likely to be those who have strong opinions about the student support services, so you can't be sure that their opinions are representative of all students. 3. Purposive Sampling This type of sampling, also known as judgment sampling, involves the researcher using their expertise to select a sample that is most useful to the purposes of the research. It is often used in qualitative research, where the researcher wants to gain detailed knowledge about a specific phenomenon rather than make statistical inferences, or where the population is very small and specific. An effective purposive sample must have clear criteria and rationale for inclusion. You want to know more about the opinions and experiences of disabled students at your university, so you purposefully select a number of students with different support needs in order to gather a varied range of data on their experiences with student services. 4. Snowball Sampling If the population is hard to access, snowball sampling can be used to recruit participants via other participants. The number of people you have access to snowballs as you get in contact with more people. You are researching experiences of homelessness in your city. Since there is no list of all homeless people in the city, probability sampling is impossible. You meet one person who agrees to participate in the research, and she puts you in contact with other homeless people that she knows in the area. Conclusion Sampling is a way to have meaningful information for the analyst without having to analyze the entire population. Sampling saves time and money. It is important to choose the right sampling technique for the information you intend to obtain. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to leave a like and contact me at the links in the description.